This is day 10 of getting to 1500 ELO on a brand new account. I have been gone for the past two days because I was out of town, so I couldn't make any videos. And before we start, I want to let you guys know that I am offering paid beginner that I am offering paid beginner coaching. I would recommend 1,100 ELO and below. I've already done some free trials for some people. They said they really enjoyed it. I myself am 1,500 ELO on my main account. And so if you want paid beginner coaching, check out my website. My link is in my bio. You just fill out a form and then I will get in contact with you. With that being said, let's get started. All right, we get white. Today we are at 1,239 ELO. We get white, so of course, I like to play the Joe Bava London. This is my main opening, and it's pretty fun to play. And now we're at 1239. Since my main ELO is 1500, we're getting closer and closer. Okay, and here, when they bring their bishop out, what you want to do is go for a pawn storm on this side of the board. And even though it does weaken your king side, in most cases, your king's going to be castling over to the queen side. And so this is all theory. You push this pawn. Technically, in some courses, in Hans, Hans Niemann's course, he says to push this pawn first and then this pawn, but this one is just a lot quicker. It gets to the point. And, okay. Here, we go for this. Creating the deadly trap of trapping the bishop. And, okay. This is a major crux in the position. If my opponent were to play pawn forward here, we wouldn't have done anything. We would have pushed this pawn, get our bishop, and try to trade the bishops. But in this case, we need to push our pawn up and hit the knight. Uh, forcing the knight to go back to either of these squares. Okay. And the plan is still pretty simple. We push the pawn, we get our bishop out, and we try to trade bishops. Uh, get our knight over to e2, or in some cases, h3. Okay. So my opponent has pushed the pawn. And so now I need to I need to understand this. If takes, I can take back with the pawn. I can also take back with this pawn. So I don't see this as a threat. I can go bishop here. They can move back, but I don't mind that. And in the case where they don't take, well, they kind of have to. Yikes. Okay, my opponent has given up not only their... Okay, well, I have to see. Because here they can block here. I was going to say they gave up their queen, but... My opponent can move here. If I give a check, they're going to block with the knight. Uh, and that's what's going to happen. So I can take with the pawn, but I don't under I don't see a reason why we shouldn't take with the bishop. Hit the king, pin the knight here, and just go on from there. So we are already up a piece in the beginning. And some people might be tempted to try to trade off all the pieces right away. But my king can also be susceptible to attacks. And... I don't see a clear-cut way to attack my opponents. I could try to just open up the board right away. Let's see. We push. Takes, takes. We are threatening to push the pawn and win a knight. Instead, he can develop his knight out. But here, this is a straight threat. Honestly, given that we have two pieces developed, our queen can come into the game pretty quickly. Our knight can come in pretty quickly. And I think our king is relatively safe. I don't see a way that he can attack it. I'm going to take this time to open up the position. I don't see it as a bad thing. And given we're up a piece, it should help us. So the the threat we're putting on my opponent is pawn forward. Okay, and he makes it even stronger by also making it a fork, which is interesting. But I see his point. He wants to get his queen out and... Maybe go for some type of counter-attack. Maybe hit this pawn. I'm not sure what he wants to do. But now we are going to have a very nice... Okay, so he does hit the pawn. So we can take with check. He's going to take here. Then our bishop's going to be hanging and our pawn's going to be hanging. Okay. I could play it safe and just save the pawn, given that this knight's not going anywhere. Um, I can also move my queen here can also give up well this is this is interesting I could save this but we're not in any real danger I also noticed that there would be a fork here if this pawn was not there that's important to note okay can we use that can we sacrifice and push her pawn and go for some checks well nope not really I could take it takes back with the pawn hitting my bishop and then it's not like we're winning a piece 
I could hit the queen this way, also defending the pawn, also getting my knight over to this square. And I don't see a, I don't see a problem with that. Go here, we can always defend the knights or defend the knight like this. Here, he's probably going to go check. We can go here, uh, hitting the queen and also defending our knights. I like that. Let's go here. I think this is a multi-purpose move. The threat here is still the exact same. And now we're defending the knight. Oh. My opponent said, I'm not going to lose my knight. I'm going to first lose my queen and then my knight. Which is always an interesting strategy. Okay. I think we should just cash out. There's really no reason to just not take a bunch of material. Okay, we want to move our bishop where to here. He can hit it again. I don't see the point in allowing him another free tempo. Okay, we can go here. That seems the most forward, most most active. Okay, and my opponent wants to open up the board. Very interesting. Now I can go check, check, and go check here. Winning the bishop, not winning the bishop. Actually, it is winning the bishop because he cannot go over to these squares. So, let's take. And let's see what my opponent takes with. I'm assuming the knight. Okay. Well, now we can go check. Uh, we don't win the bishop. Still, the, the rook is here. But we can trade off pieces. And in this situation, I'm very happy to trade pieces. That is my main goal. Now, if he goes here, hitting my bishop which is probably what he's going to do. We could take, allow him to take, and then he's on this open G file. Uh, yeah, take, he's going to take. Okay, we can also save our, uh, if we save our bishop, then he takes this bishop. Okay, whatever. Let's go ahead and cash out. Even if we lose two bishops here, we're still completely winning. Um, okay, in the interest of saving every single one of my pieces, I'm just going to bring my bishop back. Play it safe. I don't see a downside, so I'm going to do it. And probably get castled on the next move, even though we don't need to. We're not really in any danger. He does have some... He does have two pawns in the center, which... Really, at any point is not an issue. Because I have these two pawns that stop it from being past pawns. Okay. My opponent has given up a pawn. Okay. We will take it. What checks do we have? We have check and we have check. This check he can take. Okay, check. He just moves. I don't see a reason to move. Let's get a rook and make it an open file. So that if the knight were to ever move, for example, this queen can come up with a deadly attack. And when you're in this position, you're up a lot of material and you see that you have a lot of pieces around his king. What you should notice is where his king can't go. So he can't go here. Uh, the queen can maybe possibly go here. I can cut off some more squares with this, but he can take... Okay. If I move my knight, he can take that pawn. Maybe I don't want him taking anything. We can go check. Uh, he's going to go here. And then we have check. If check and here, then we can probably get our bishop out this way. Okay. Let's do that. Let's go ahead and give a check. I like that my opponent is fighting. He's not giving up without a fight. You never know. I might blunder checkmates in one. It could happen. So enjoy. Okay, he pins himself, which with my strategy, trading down everything seems to be well, seems to be what I want to do. Now, okay. I don't see a reason why we shouldn't take. Let's go ahead. Let's take. Okay, he still has pawns in the center. Um, let's see. Our pawn is no longer under attack. I'm thinking about getting a bishop out this way. We can also go here, uh, attacking the pawn. But let's get our other pieces out. We have a knight that we haven't developed. So why not take, why not uh, bring it out? Okay, goes here. We have a check. Um, and usually, if you can't find a checkmate right away... I never find an issue in bringing your pieces more towards the king, and even if there not, might not be like a checkmate right away, getting your pieces closer to the king, cutting off more squares, will eventually lead to some form of checkmate or some sort of tactic. So, 
Some people might be worried about finding the exact right move, finding the exact right way to give a checkmate, but if you can generally just bring your key, your pieces towards your opponent's piece, your opponent's king, then you're most likely going to win. So we have a bishop, we have a rook. Let's bring it all together. Let's bring the whole party here. Okay, this knight doesn't really have a prospect, but this queen does, and we have a check here. Okay, bring our queen more towards the action. Uh, again, I don't see a problem with it. And we might be getting a checkmate soon. Okay, if we go here, attacking this pawn, he could push, defending. He can also go here, hitting the rook. And if he goes here... Hmm. Goes here, here. Same thing would happen. But again... There's no reason to find the exact right move. Okay, so... I want to give a smothered mate. If a knight could end up on this square and this queen wasn't here, that would be mate. Now, is there a way for our knight to get here? Okay, our knight has to be here and then here. Okay, so if we push here, sacrifice the pawn and go here, then we can sacrifice some material and give a mate. Possibly. Okay, I like that plan. We have our bishop, we have our queen, and we have a rook in the attack. Why not get our knight? Should bring every single one of our pieces. All right, and our goal was to bring our knight forward, and I might play even a funny move. If I go knight here, my opponent kind of just plays a waiting move, like pawn forward. I can take the pawn, or I can move my queen here, and if he takes, this is checkmate, smothered, which um, I'm quite looking for. This is, I think, a good move, because it stops me from at least moving my knights here, which uh, could be bad for him. Now, let me calculate something. If I go here, he's going to take the bishop. I want a smothered mate. Ah, but we have some sort of... Hmm, hmm, hmm. I want my smothered mate. Can we go for it? He does have a check. But we can move. If I go here, he takes the bishop. We go here, hitting the knight, preparing this, and I don't think he can defend it. Okay. That's fine. Let's let him win the bishop. And then even, if he takes the bishop here, I'm going to offer my queen for free and allow him to take my queen. And he might be very excited in this case, but I have a smothered mate. So good game to my opponents. Let's go on to the next game. We have black. And my opponent's playing a very passive setup. I'm assuming they're going to go for some sort of hippo. Oh no, they just bring their queen out. Okay. My opponent probably brings their queen out and still works for them in some way. So, yeah. I think we can go for the normal Karl Khan moves because, in this case, it stops the white bishop. Okay. Now, this isn't a bad move, actually, because he's attacking early, but I can defend. This is called the pan-off attack. Okay, I can take with the knight. I can also take with the pawn and keep this structure. And that structure I'm very used to. Okay. Check. If I go bishop here, he can take and bring my knight or queen forward. Yep, and this pawn's defended. So, get more pieces developed. Let him help me develop. I can take with my knight, but I think my knight wants to go here. And my knight could also want to go here and look for these squares. Probably that's even a better choice for our pieces. Okay. So if we go here, attacking the queen, this pawn's now defended. We can bring our knight back here if we need to. And uh, this pawn's going to be defended twice. So I am cool with that. And we're looking for some checks. This square is weak, even though the queen is defending it as of now. It will become a target for us in the future. Okay. Let's go here. Build a good... Oh! <laughs> it's so surprising to me sometimes because they just move their queen a hundred times and you don't see this usually okay we can probably offer a queen trade and just go into an end game where I have a good structure I don't see a problem with that if I block with my knight the issue is he can take the pawn and I don't want him taking free pieces so let's go here okay 
I could take with a knight. That's a possibility. And then bring my knights here and go for these squares. That could be something that I could do. Is rerouting my knights because this knight doesn't have too many options here. I like that. Let's go for this. Take control of a lot of squares here. Okay. <laughs> so you'll see. What they like to do a lot is just go for early attacks. But in this case, I can just stop it with my rook or even my king. Uh, and then he just won't have anything. And I think my king is better just to bring it towards the center. Uh, given it's an end game. I think that will be good for us. Another way is going rook here, but he can take. Is there a way we can trap him? Maybe. Ah, but then we have the check here and some sort of trade here on this, this, but that might not be good. Oh, okay, I see a tactic. We go rook here, he takes, we go check. Goes here, we have check, and then we can probably win some material here. Uh, but he's going to take the rook in the end if I don't use it. So let's calculate. I bring my rook here, he's going to take... We go check. He's going to go here to preserve this. We go check. He goes here. But then my knight and my rook is hanging. And in that case, maybe I can sacrifice for this, this, but then he has a check in the end. Okay. Here's what. Let's not make it complicated. We can bring that rook over here whenever we want. Uh, and we don't have to blunder anything. We can also go here, here, and allow him to take, and we just have a very good initiative. Uh, and maybe even trap his pieces. But in this case, I'm going to play it simple. Bring my king forward. Just defend all the squares. And then go here, or maybe kick the knight away. Very methodical. You don't need to really go for anything crazy. You know, this might have been winning. Maybe I had some sort of checkmate, or some way to win more material with a tactic. Uh, but there's no need. Okay, I can take and completely ruin his king side. That's an option. I can also go check here and take. He gets his rook out. Uh, but then if we go here, that's not the best. We could take and then go here targeting the pawn and also going for this fork. Um, yeah, I don't see an issue with it. Let's take. It might give him an open rook, but given that this is a... This is not a... Uh, this is not a game where he can checkmate me right away. So we can go knights here. We can also kick him out and then go knights here. And then go for these squares. And I don't see an issue with that either. Okay. Well, let's get this knight out of our territory. Because this knight can be annoying in the future. We don't want it. Okay. We go here. I don't see a problem with this move. Attack the pawn. Attack the square. Oh. He just gives up the square. Now we have an option of even taking here or going for the check. Uh, and if he goes here, of course, we have the fork. If he goes anywhere else, well, then I don't see how we're doing that well. Okay, let's just take the free pawn. It seems to be a free pawn. Okay, let me see. There might be something tactical here. Now, we can go check and try to go for this if he goes back. Uh, we can also take, defending your knight for one move. Then if he takes, we have a check. Um, okay. No, our knight probably needs to be saved. So I don't see a reason why we shouldn't save it by bringing it back. Just simple moves. He might develop his king, which is something you'll see a lot. <laughs> you'll see a lot in these, uh, these types of games. Your opponent will start developing their king. Okay, I think we can go here. If he takes, we take, he's going to take with the knight. So he's going to be winning a pawn in that situation. Maybe I don't want that. We can also go here and offer the trade. Given we're up a pawn, that doesn't seem bad. Okay. Go here. Trade. That's okay. I don't see anything wrong with it. We can also take, take. Is there any tactics? I don't see it. Um, yeah, no. I don't think we should go for anything too complicated. Let's go back here and trade. Okay. I think he blunders because he gives me the knight, and since he wanted to uh, capture everything here, now he can't because I can take back and he can no longer capture. 
And I am by no means playing this correctly. I am playing this probably the most, not the most incorrect, but I'm playing it uh, just in a, like a beginner-friendly way, making sure it's easy for people to understand. Okay. Here he's attacking my pawn. I can defend it with this. I can defend it by, with my rook. I can also go here, but he has a dark square bishop that he can maybe use in the future. Uh, but it brings my king towards the center. It connects the rooks with a move like knight out. It can also, it's also one way of... It's also one move away from defending this pawn, so I like this move, actually. I don't see a problem with it. Okay. Opponent develops their pawns. Okay. I think we can bring our knights here to attack the pawn and also bring it onto a good diagonal. Simple moves. Okay. He's continuing to develop his pawns. Now, these are unconnected, so I'm not really scared of that. Now my plan is probably to bring my rooks in, and uh, maybe target these squares if the option ever shows up. Okay, my opponent gives up probably the game here, opening up his king way too much. Let's give it a check. Now I don't know how this is winning completely yet, but given that he's completely, given that he's just in the center of the board, this is going to be pretty bad. My opponent decides to attack my bishop, and this is just a one move threat. Because I can either move out of the way, or I can pin the pawn. And in this case, let's pin the pawn. He can no longer take, uh, and in this scenario, he has to defend with his rook, or his or his bishop. Uh, depends on what he wants. But he has to defend it, because I'm threatening to win the pawn. And that pawn is a very important pawn to him. Also, we have two minutes left on the clock, so I'm going to go just a bit quicker here. Maybe less explaining, but I'm just going to go quick. Yeah, rook there is what what I expected. Okay. We can bring our king up, probably, and then go for some sort of check. Uh, bringing your king forward is not the worst idea, but the, he's defending this. So I think we should bring our rook into the game. I like this. Uh, because we're just taking up the open file. Okay, he's no longer pinned, but he's also no longer defending. So in this case, we can sacrifice our rook for another rook. So it's not exactly a sacrifice. And we're just going for trades. Okay. Let's see. We can go for trades here with the bishop. Uh, that's a possibility. We can also go after the pawns here. Yeah, why not? Let's bring our rook a little bit more into his territory. Start going after some pawns. I could try to defend or try to trade off some pieces but in this case it's not necessary now if I go here if he pushes I can take with the bishop if he pushes I can I can even push and allow him to take so I believe in this situation we're gonna either be winning we're gonna be winning one of these pawns just making it simple okay oh he pinned me I actually didn't see this okay so we're gonna have to play an end game where we're down two pawns, but we're, we have no time on the board, so let's go quick. Good fine. I, didn't even, I wasn't even paying attention. But now we're going to have to win this end game. We are up two pawns, so this is going to be interesting. Okay, let's go here. We're out of the pin, so he has to take. If he doesn't, he allows me to get out of my own pin, so let's go here. And this might be looking bad for us, but we are up a few pawns here. Maybe sneak into this way. Right, okay. I have one minute left on the board. I'm going to sneak in and try to win these pawns. I'm glad I have this because now I can start to really... Okay, he gives up a pawn, which is very good. Very good for us. He's going to give a check. And then we're going to take. And then we're going to go here and win the pawn. This is good. I'm glad I blundered this because I can showcase something interesting. Oh, now I have the past pawns. This is not good. My opponent is making a very serious mistake here, letting me get past pawns on the board. Okay. Very interesting. All right. I think this past pawn will save us. Maybe we get a draw, and I'm happy for a draw, honestly. I am happy for a draw. Mm, he should be bringing his rook over and trying to stop this pawn. That is his main goal here. Okay, let's bring your king up this way and get behind the pawn. Let's go this way and this way. Push. 
And then we can block with the bishop. And we can go for a draw. I'm happy with this. Instructive draw. If some people just lose like a full rook for a bishop, they might give up. But this is just showing people how to make a draw. So good game to my opponent. Again, if you want paid beginner coaching, I am do again, I am doing paid beginner coaching. Uh, under 1,100 ELO and below. I've had about four students already. They've said they enjoyed my coaching. So if you are interested in some paid coaching, click the link in my bio down below. All you have to do is fill out the form uh, and I will send you an email and we can work something out. But I will see you guys tomorrow.